Hello beautifuls, welcome back to my Chanel. <gasps> Do we have a video for you today, my lovelies? I have not made a video like this in a little while. Um, there's no real reason for that, it's just that I haven't felt like making one. But today, my loves, today, I will not be supporting this beauty brand. First of all though, I must actually say, my God, it's so hot today in London, so I do apologise if you can hear a fan and you can hear me complaining and my hair was even like, no, you can't have a curl today, I just don't think. But talking about being flustered, I was absolutely, absolutely gobsmacked when I stumbled across this article from a subreddit on Reddit called Beauty Guru Chatter. Now, Beauty Guru Chatter can kind of be a bit visceral at times, a little bit much, but I was really surprised when I came across this post and it was about the survival palette by Amy Lee Cosmetics. Not to be confused with Amy Lee of Evanescence. No, it is not the same Amy Lee. So my lovelies, we are today going to talk about this horrendous palette um, that should never have seen the light of day. I don't know why they were thinking that this was a great idea. Where do I even start? Where do I even start with this? Where do I even start? So I'm going to go to the actual article that I was really surprised about um, that kind of covers everything in great detail. And it is by CafeMum.com. The article is by Lauren Gordon and it was published uh, this year actually on March 11th. I actually thought this was a little bit older than this, but this kind of surprised me. So, makeup brand releases Survivor's palette and no one can believe how insensitive it is. So, my loves, the Survivor's palette is meant to be an homage to people who have been through it. Been through a big deal in their life, whether that's cancer or suffering with a debilitating disease, and is meant to pay homage to them and the things that they go through and the diseases that they have. Now, Amy Lee Cosmetics is an indie brand, which means they don't have a huge amount of like start to finish processing. They don't have management teams. They don't have market research teams, that kind of a thing. I don't even personally know the owner of Amy Lee Cosmetics. I assume they are called Amy Lee. I just want to say, I don't want you to send hate to anyone involved in this video. I do not think that that's actually a uh, a, a sensible way to deal with your emotions when it comes to something like this. But I am the child of someone who passed away of cancer and I am horrendously outraged that this palette wasn't, I don't know, that it didn't even go to anyone to be like, is this a good idea? Should we do this? You know, so the storyline goes, the brand announced that in honor of their PR person, Amanda Roussin, they launched a survivor's palette, which would contain various shades recognizing a myriad of diseases. The original product description, which has since been updated, revealed that a portion of the palette's proceeds would go to her, not giving any details as to why. Now I'm assuming, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a bit of a assumption here, you know, assumption, assume, make an ass of you and me, assume that um, Amanda Roussin has perhaps gone through an ordeal with one of these diseases, and that's why the company thought, we'll create a survivor's palette in order to raise funds for treatment treatment potentially, something along those lines. I think they were so off the mark with this palette. So, so I'm just going to move over here a second whilst I put the palette on the screen here, my lovelies. And we are going to literally look at some of the colour choices that they have used and the names that they've used in this palette. Now, if you look at the front of the palette, it kind of does look quite nice. I think, you know, this pastel idea with butterflies and the idea of a survivor's palette, it's not it for me. And I'm going to explain why a little bit later in the video as to why I would not have gone this route. If you wanted to do something like this to go ahead, and really help people and bring awareness to a subject whilst also raising money for charities or for good deeds or something like that. You know, a little something. I understand wanting to do that from a brand point of view. I want to do that when I have my own brand. I just think that this was totally incorrect. So, so the shadow names are Parkinson's, Diabetes, uh, Chiari Malformation, or is that Chiari? It might be Chiari Malformation. I don't know that word. Sorry, my loves. Endometriosis, Cervical Cancer, Breast Cancer, Lymph Lymphoma, heart disease, depression, epilepsy, lung cancer, suicide, childhood cancer, PTSD, and child abuse. How on earth? What was going through the, the inventor's mind at this point? Because how on earth, how on earth could you have a, a tutorial on YouTube? Like even entertaining the idea of being like, oh, today on my eyes, I'm wearing PTSD and child abuse. Absolutely insane. So the palette's color scheme, I don't have a problem with. You know, it's a bright rainbow color palette in order to raise awareness of like the differences between humanity and the different experiences that we can have throughout life. I just absolutely do not think that it is appropriate to have shadow names like Parkinson's, lung cancer, suicide, 
childhood cancer. I wouldn't even expect someone like Jemima Starship to come up with something this crass and unacceptable. Even the way that they've named these shades, like lymphoma is a green sparkly colour. Like, when you suffer from lymphoma and you're having these horrible symptoms, shall we say, the last thing you're thinking of is a sparkly green. That is absolutely repugnant. Epilepsy is a black and blue sparkly metallic situation. Like the idea of suffering from epilepsy and having a seizure and seeing stars, as people say, and then naming an eyeshadow after that does not make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Where was the business sense in this? Did the did the owner of this brand really think that this was going to go on social media and become a viral sensation and everyone was like, yes, well done, I support the survivors. Absolutely incorrect way to go around it. And I'm, I'm really shocked that it actually came out like this. So here are some of the comments that are on the subreddit on Beauty Guru Chatter. One user called the shade names insensitive and triggering. Absolutely. For me, I do not want to look at a shadow called lung cancer and think of people in my family who've had that. I don't want to look, I don't want to put yellow on my eyes and be reminded of the time in my life that I was suicidal. I absolutely hate this palette. I think this is so off the mark. I'm on my little soapbox here, my lovelies, but I hope that you can agree with me here because I am absolutely ludicrously shocked that this was even a thing. Even a thing. Apparently it says here that the brand hasn't publicly confirmed this, but it appears that the shades are reflective of the awareness ribbons for each disease or issue. I Now, I don't know if you, you would agree with this, but I don't agree with the idea of like labeling a disease with a color and then profiting off that color. I don't think that that's a correct... I don't think that's the correct idea. I couldn't put these colours on my eye, create an eye look and, be, and feel confident telling someone on the street if they said to me, I really like your sparkly eyeshadow, what's it called, what's the brand? I could not say it's Childhood Cancer by Amy Lee Cosmetics. I could not feel comfortable. I would never. That person would look at you and be like, what are you talking about? Childhood Cancer? What are you talking about? So insensitive to anybody who actually is a survivor of any of these situations. I just think it's, how can you be that off the mark? How can you be this off the mark? Another user says, which I kind of agree with here. Can you imagine I'm putting heart disease in my crease and I put on breast cancer to deepen the outer corner. Lymphoma all over the lid. Absolutely disgraceful. I mean, like, I can see the irony and the hilarity in that as well. But it is just very much like this. So this was intended as a good intentions thing. And I don't understand how you can be that off the mark. I know I've said that like nine times. If a brand was to come out and do something like this and they wanted to make it in some way a, 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 a moment in the beauty world in representing people who have gone through these illnesses and come out the other side stronger and more... Um, and willing to share their story, I would have called this palette something like thriving and maybe maybe hired an entire team of people who represent these illnesses as brand ambassadors in a say in a way. I don't know I, don't, I just don't know how you wouldn't do it otherwise. Like the you could have renamed you could have called these shade names anything. They could have been anything. These shade names could have literally been anything. If this was a project I was involved with, I don't know if I even would A, but if I was somehow forced to be involved in a project like this, I would have gone with names that presented something like um like striving and thriving and winning and and um Things that really mean a lot to you when you are having these sorts of um, situations happen in your life. You could have had one called love. You could have had a shade called love. You could have had a, a shade called like esteem. Something like this. Anything. So another comment even here mentions that they could have just not used shade names at all. Had a spiel on the back about how people should be proud surviving through hardship. Whether it was emotional, mental or something else. And the palette dedicated to people who are cur currently going through those serious illnesses. So that a percentage of the proceeds would go to a charity or a foundation. That would have been so much better. Why even name the shades at all? You could have just put them as numbers. Maybe not even numbers, just had them unnamed. You don't have to name these things like that. You could have literally just said, this is the Survivor palette. This is this beautiful campaign we're going to involve people who have had very different experiences throughout their lives as models for this palette and then moved forward and donated a percentage of the proceeds towards a charity. That would have worked out so much more. I think we would have all reacted in a way that would have uplifted and thrived this brand. So... Amy Lee Cosmetics has actually since put out a, a statement on the, the product description saying, The Survivor's palette is featuring our PR girl, the talented Amanda Rusin, who suffers with Chiari malformation and has survived cervical cancer. She has had many other health issues, including depression due to the loss of her late husband due to suicide. Amy Lee suffers with anxiety, depression, OCD, bipolar disorder and PTSD from the death of her son who had cerebral palsy. This palette was meant to hopefully empower and shed light on some serious issues. This was not intended to be hurtful. Amy Lee sincerely apologizes if this is offensive or triggering to anyone. Proceeds of every palette ordered will be donated to two organizations, uh, parkinsons.org and rarediseases.org. Now, 
Amanda Roussin has been through a lot. From this short excerpt that they have stated on their product website, on their product description on their website, Amanda has been through a lot. And I feel like she deserved to have much more appropriate way of honoring her strength than to do it like this. I feel like there's been some extreme miscommunication between product idea and product development to product release. Do you know what I mean? I just don't think that that's appropriate at all. I'm glad that the brand has made an addendum, has named who they are supporting, and keeping to the promise that proceeds of every palette will be donated towards those two organizations. I think that is actually the correct way to respond, although it is still shocking. As of right now, the Survivor palette is not available on their website, so it looks like a pulled product, which... I must admit, is a sensible business move. I don't think that you should ever have something like that on your on your um, on your list of product catalogs if you think that that's something that's appropriate to sell. Now, obviously, while I do have these immense emotions right now, I do actually want to say that there are great ways to support charities that really mean a lot, such as RareDiseases.org and Parkinson's.org. I just do not think that you need to have it honored with naming eyeshadow colors over it, like it's some frivolous thing you can just pick up in a store and put on your face, like. These things are not that at all. Please check out some links that I have included in the description box below in order to raise some awareness about the things that we have talked about today, some of the topics and some of the illnesses that we have brought up today in today's video. Well, my lovelies, that was quite a little rant from me. I apologize, my loves. Remember, don't ever send hate to anyone from any of these videos. I'm not here for it. Do not send them. I'm not bashing this brand. I just think this was an immensely miscalculated step in product development. Um, although I won't be ever spending money with Amy Lee Cosmetics, you are are more than welcome to do whatever you want with your cash, my loves. I want to say a massive thank you to my Patreons. You can see yourselves on the screen right here, my lovelies. And once again, a massive thank you and a huge shout out to my top tier Patreons and channel members. Erwin Fox, Stephanie Neotupski, Erin Conkle, Magusta Lagoose, Steffi Tech, Caitlin Wright, Dana Broderick, Moldy Apple, Orkos Samoji, Jaro Pavlovsky, Jodia and Summer Neff. Thank you so much for supporting the Chanel, my lovelies. We are all the way past 50k subscribers. We're nearly at 60. I literally cannot believe it. Thank you so much for the love you guys are giving my Chanel. And I want to leave the video on this note, my lovelies. I would love for you to go and love and hug and give a cuddle to your loved ones, whether that's humans in your life, whether that's animals in your life, whether that's best friends, family members, whatever it is, go and give them a cuddle because you never, ever know what's going to happen in the future. I will leave it at that, my lovelies. And I will see you on Thursday for another episode of The Swan.